Hey y'all, thank you for tuning in to another video. Before we get into it, I just wanted to get that disclaimer. Please excuse my ashy hands. I wash my hands a lot as last shake and I need to work on moisturizing them. So first things first, I take the bottom lid, pull it down gently, as well as the top lid. I pull that up gently, just so the eye can be slightly, very slightly open. Or not open, just but just pulled up away from the bottom lid. Because I don't want my clients squeezing and I don't really want my clients to close their eyes. Which I tell them, but sometimes it's hard for them to do that, of course, because the glue is strong. So when it comes to the application process, if the client does have a specific preference on how they want them to be applied, whether they want them to be thin or they want them to be more bold, or if they want wispy bottom lashes, or if they want all short set, I just go based off of how their natural set is or how, sorry, how the top lashes are styled. So in this case, we have a wispy set and she doesn't have a preference on how she wants them. So I go in also with the bottom lashes giving the bottom lashes a wispy style and I don't really I'm not really too meticulous with it or strategic with it I literally just pick up eights and some sixes and some sevens and I mix them all together and I try to like stagger them to where they look um wispy they give the wispy effect and I do the same for the other eye So if you not have yet already watched my previous upload of my bottom lash tutorial on my volume cat eye set, go do that now, please. I go in some detail also, but that specific one is for a volume set. This one is cat classic, as you can see. And I just want to point out that I make sure my client's eyes are very dry, even though tearing is not something that will happen with every single client. Tearing is close to inevitable when doing bottom lashes because the eye has to be somewhat open while doing them versus when you're doing the top lashes the bottom the eyes are completely closed because the bottom lashes are taped down you can still tape the bottom the top lashes back but that will still that still won't be conducive to you applying the bottom lashes without the eye being open if that makes sense so as we know as lash checks adhesive should never touch the skin right but, um, of course, an exception is made for bottom lashes because it's kind of inevitable to not touch the skin, especially due to the fact that a lot of clients don't have full bottom lash lines. So if they want a full lash, a full bottom lash look, if, if that's something that you want to offer them, even if they still can achieve it, you do have to attach some of their bottom lashes to the skin. Um, I personally don't like doing that, but I do do it sometimes for my clients because I know that they wouldn't want a sparse or thin looking bottom lash line like if they're getting bottom lashes applied more than likely they're going for a more dramatic look so um, you can let your clients know that this is going on or you can just do it but I will say try your best to apply as many bottom lashes on actual hairs as possible to refrain from applying so much adhesive or the adhesive coming in contact with the skin because you just you do want to avoid that as much as possible being that that's just a general pre, um precaution in lash extensions the adhesive should never touch the skin so just keep that in mind but i also say like i said if you have to do it then just go ahead and do it i will say that just also keep in mind that those lash extensions that you are attaching to the skin those will be the first to come off of course because it's not attached to an actual natural lash so it's not really holding on to anything so when oils begin to come on their skin or when they wash their face those lashes that are attached to the skin will be the first ones to come off so the ones that you're attaching to the skin is literally basically just to complete the look but the lash extensions attached to hairs will be the ones that will have the some type of retention to be honest with you the ones attached to the skin are literally just to complete the set another last tip i recommend keeping in mind is that of course you see while i'm doing the video but it's kind of easy for the lashes to start flying away or flying in the wrong direction because for me i, I let my clients use sometimes both fans but they definitely use a fan while i'm doing this so the wind from the fan and my fans are strong click the link in my bio www. 
ZipperDispike.com. We have three speed mini fans and they are powerful. Sorry. But yes, my fans are powerful. So sometimes my fans fly in the wrong direction while my clients are using the fan. So of course I'm not going to take the fan away from them. But as you can see in the video, as soon as I place the lash on, as soon as I place the extension on the natural lash, I'm kind of guiding it in the direction downwards so it can dry in that direction because if, if, as we know the same thing goes for the bottom lashes as they do for the top you want to make sure your direction is precise before the lash the before the lash adhesive dries because if the adhesive dries while the lash is placed in the incorrect direction then you have to remove it and i will say removing these bottom lashes are not easy um, I do recommend using two tweezers to remove them because you can yank the bottom lashes out. But as you see, some of her old bottom lashes are kind of already twisted and turned. And I'll just be honest, like sometimes I just leave those and let those naturally fall out because I don't want to do too much pulling and tugging on their eyes. And I just try to change the direction or I just add different lashes around them and you re it kind of covers up the fact that they're, the old lashes are going in the wrong direction. So as I apply the remaining of the bottom lashes on this video in real time, because I don't want to speed it up, I just want it to be in real time. I feel like a lot of videos or a lot of content is just sped up and it's like, if it's a tutorial or if it's something demonstrating something, something got to be shown in real time, okay? We got to really show the ins and the outs and the mistakes and like you see how that lash is flipping you know that's that's really that's really going on that's really what's going on so i just want to throw some pointers out there about one mistake that i made as a beginner lash check so hopefully you can learn from it so as a beginner lash check i feel like when i first started doing lashes i really didn't pay attention to how i chose my target audience i appreciate my customers and my clients so much and some of them have, have still been rocked with me for the whole entire six years that i've been servicing them and so I have a, um, a variety of clients um, when it comes to income. And that is the whole, that's the topic of like basically what I'm about to talk about right now. When, when If you were beginning to last check, I really would recommend you choosing your target audience and your customer base very wisely. Because when it comes to the economy and how the world goes, like right now, everything Jeez, is just like... becoming so much higher in price, right? So a lot of people are scaling back on a lot of things, including things like luxury service or things that are not like a requirement in their everyday life, mm -hmm. something that they can substitute for something else. They probably are weeding she out to save money. And sometimes for some clients that may be lash extensions because lash extensions are a service that is considered luxury. So. As a beginner lash check, I would recommend going to specific areas that have people who generate a very high income. I would reach out to people who maybe are like doctors, lawyers. Um, I would go to dentist office to put my business cards in places like that. I would go to cities that, um, like in Atlanta, I live in Atlanta, and Buckhead is a city where a lot of black entrepreneurs are or even if they don't reside um, in that city, a lot of black people with money visit that area because it's just a, an expensive area. It's, in, it's by downtown, but it's basically kind of like the heart of Atlanta. One of the hearts of Atlanta, of course, because that's not downtown. It's just like a community to where it's kind of like a lavish lifestyle. It's really luxurious. So I'm just giving an example of that's one, that's one place where I would go to pass out cards, to network, even if you're going out to eat and sitting out, sitting down giving yourself like a solo date um, at a bar or like a nice restaurant. Bring your business cards everywhere, but make sure you're going to high quality areas to attract high quality people for your business. Even if it's outside of your business, like I'm about to start practicing it with this with my, with my everyday life, going to areas where wealthy people or wealthy minded people are so that when the down seasons come or the down times come, you're still getting clients. Um, like I said, most of my clients is, I have a variety of clients who make a lot, a lot of money. And then I have some clients who just get their lashes done when I have a special and you don't want to have too many clients just getting their lashes done when you have a special, because 
even if that is a client that would like to come to you consistently, they won't be able to because they just can't afford the luxury yeah, service consistently. Eyes, and you want clients who literally can afford the luxury service yeah, consistently. Like you want some clients more. who yeah. consider getting their lashes done, like they go to the dentist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's just client, like that's something yeah, that they have to do. You don't really want clients yeah. who only yeah, get their lashes done for holidays, only get their lashes line. done when they're going out of town because mm -hmm. this can nah, hinder your business um, in some ways. And, of course, a client who even makes money can be a client who just get their lashes done on special occasions as well. But my whole point of this is to basically say, when you are attracting your clients, just manifest and make sure that you are targeting exactly who you want to deal with. You know what I'm saying? You want to make sure that you are targeting people who get lash extensions done on a regular basis because I'm telling you right now, of course, all servicers or service providers will experience ups and downs but to refrain from that or like that, to be it. you know mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to stay booked and busy having clients who so had that money is, is key okay money. and i'm mm -hmm. talking about that money money okay you want to have clients you want you know i'm not sure about how you guys choose your men to date but you know go about it that way if, if you know what i mean <laughs> So, um, yeah, and I just want to just throw this in here, too. I have, I just want to give y'all a story time of when I had this one client, right? I guess she didn't like the way I did her lashes, but she never, she never told me. Oh, no, she, she it wasn't that she didn't like that I did her lashes, how did I did her lashes. She, she was telling me that her lashes started falling off quickly after I did them. And this is another important thing. Having in your policy that if, there is ever a case where the lash extensions are falling out fast your clients must notify you and reach out to you and let you know that within two days because a lot of people like to act like their lashes was falling off but there's no evidence of them falling off and to be honest with you they're also a returning client so it's like okay if the lashes were falling off why did you come back somebody is lying <laughs> So, yeah, like, if the lashes were coming off, Buki, why did you come back? And, you know, I said that in a nice way. I, I just said, you know, well, going forward, I would have to see some type of proof. You would have to send me a picture, and you would have to reach out to me ahead of time and let me know. But during this appointment, I will not be able to compensate you because, you know, I'm just going off of your word respectfully. But I can't do that because I did put my time and effort into that previous set about two to three weeks ago. And... You've already paid me for it, you know, and it's a done deal. I wash my hands with it. So going forward, please read my policy and please understand that if you do have any problems with your lash extensions or the service, that you must reach out to me and let me know within 48 hours or else it's up to you, babes. That's just the way I let her know. But do y'all know when the time I get, by the time I got done with her lashes, she gave me $5 short of what I asked her for. And... I let her know, and she kept it moving. I rude, right? Okay, so yeah, that was my little tech talk for today because I'm running out of time, and yeah, I can talk, baby. But let's get back into these bottom lashes. So when I'm done, since I do not use sensitive tape to lift the lids up and pull the lids down, I do make sure that I'm being very careful about pulling the tape off, and I never put the tape directly, or I never push the tape all the way down directly on their brows because I want to make sure I'm definitely not ever pulling any hairs out of their brows because of course you know here little by little eventually it'll be a ball spot baby so we, we gotta make sure they are keeping the brows <laughs> keeping all the brows that they came in with we don't want to leave we don't want to keep any of their brow hairs because that is disrespectful okay we just taking care of the lashes so yes I'm very gentle about not making my clear tape because the clear tape is very sticky and way more strong I do not place that all the way down on the hair. And we're just going to give it a little brush. Y'all, I'm a little heavy-handed, so I don't think I'm hurting them. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Here is the final product. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Please click the link in my description box to shop all of your lash supply needs. And follow me on Instagram at SS Lash Supply and Cybritic Spikes. And the same for TikTok. 
Thank you. Stay tuned for more videos.